In this video, we will be solving this question which says Joe Grad has just arrived at the Big Q. He has a fellowship that covers his tuition and the rent on an apartment. In order to get by, Joe has become a grader in intermediate price theory, earning $100 a month. Out of this $100, he must pay for his food and the utilities in his apartment. His utility expenses consist of heating cost when he heats his apartment and air conditioning cost when he cools it. To raise the temperature of his apartment by 1 degree, it costs him $2 per month or $20 per month to raise it by 10 degrees. To use air conditioning to cool his apartment by a degree, it costs him $3 per month. Whatever is left over after paying the utilities, he uses that to buy the food at $1 per unit. With this information, we are asked, when Joe first arrives in September, the temperature of his apartment is 60 degrees. If he spends nothing on heating or cooling, the temperature in his room will be 60 degrees and will have $100 left to spend on food. If he heated the room to 70 degrees, he would have dash left to spend on food. If he cooled the temp room to 50 degrees, he would have dash left to spend on food. On the graph below, should draw September's budget constraint with a black ink. Hint, you have just found the three points that Drew can afford. Apparently, these, his budget set is not bounded by a single straight line. Okay, so this is the graph given to us where on the x-axis we have temperature and on, and on the y-axis we have food. Let's first summarize this entire information. So we are given that Joe has $100 out of which he uses them either to heat or cool the room which is by increasing the temperature of his room or reducing it and another is by using the food. Food costs him one dollar per unit and for temperature we have two scenarios if he heats it or if he cools it if he heats it it costs him two dollars per month for one degree so this is the cost of has a cost of two dollars and if he cools it it has a cost of three dollars per month so clearly cooling is much costlier as compared to heating it is also given that when he arrives in september the temperature is of 60 degrees and if he spends nothing on heating or cooling in his room with a temperature of 60 degrees, he would have left of $100. So in September, we have the first point as 60, 100 as the temperature outside is 60 degrees and he has $100 left with him. So your first point is this. Now let's calculate another point. Now the next question says if he heated the room to 70 degrees that means we know that one degree of heating if he heats by one degree that means if he increases the temperature by one degree it costs him two dollars. Now in order to reach a temperature of 70 degree if he starts from 60 degrees that means 60 to 70 he has to increase the temperature of the room by 10 degrees so by unitary method your 10 degrees would cost him 20 dollars now he is able to reach a temperature of 70 degrees costing him 20 dollars he initially had 100 dollars with him out of which he had given 20 dollars for increasing the temperature by 70 degrees that means he now has 100 minus 20 dollars left for other stuff which here is food. So that means he has 80 dollars left for other stuff. Giving you the point as 70 comma 80. Oh, because he has increased the temperature by 10 degrees. Making him reach the temperature of 70 degrees. And in order to increase the temperature by 10 degrees, he has to give a cost of $20. So out of which, 
leaving him with only eighty dollars spent on food, as this entire budget was hundred dollars. Now, similarly, if he has so, here the answer becomes: if he heated the room to seventy degrees, he would have left eighty dollars to spend on food. Now, similarly, if he cools the room by two fifty degrees. Now again, from sixty degrees, he has to reach a fifty degree. This is fifty. That means he has to reduce the temperature again by ten degrees. Now, in case of cooling, it cost him three dollars. So that means if reducing the temperature by one degree. So obviously, for cool, you have to reduce the temperature. That's why I have written minus one degree. So now, for reducing the temperature by one degree, it cost him three dollars. And if he has to reduce the temperature by ten degrees, it would cost him thirty dollars. This is simple by unitary method. Now he had hundred dollars with him, out of which he had given thirty dollars to get the desired room temperature. So the amount left for food is hundred minus thirty, which is equal to seventy. So here your answer becomes he would have left seventy dollars left. To spend on food, giving you another point as here we have temperature, so we are reaching the temperature of fifty degrees, leaving us with the expenditure on food as seventy. So your point becomes fifty comma seventy. Now you have two points with yourselves, which are this seventy comma eighty and fifty comma seventy. Now let's plot these points, which should lie your seventy comma eighty lies here. And your point fifty comma seventy lies here. Now joining these three points, you would be easily able to get your budget line. Now note here that the the your budget line in this scenario is not a straight line but a inverted V shape. So let's move on to the next part, which says in December outside temperature is thirty degrees. And in August, Woodrow is trying to understand the map macroeconomics while the temperature outside is eighty-five degrees. On the same graph you used above, draw Joe's budget constraint for the month of December in blue ink and August in red ink. So this was the graph we drew in the previous part. We are on the x-axis we have temperature, and on the y-axis we have food. Now note that. In for this graph, we started at the point sixty comma hundred, where the outside temperature was sixty, and if he neither heats or cools, it leaves him with hundred dollars to spend on food. Similar, and we calculated these two points by deviating by ten degrees. So if he heats, if he cools by ten degrees, he is able to reach this point, and if he heats by ten degrees, he is able to reach this point. So again, we have to repeat the same process, but now we would be starting from a different temperature. So for December, we would be starting with a thirty degrees, and for August, we would be starting with a eighty-five degrees. And again, we would be calculating two more points. So by heating or cooling by ten degrees. So let's take the deviation by ten degrees only, so that the calculation is simple. And by doing that, we would be able to calculate your three points and joining those, you would be easily able to calculate your budget constraint. In December, your outside temperature is thirty degrees. So if he neither heats or cools, he, so he would not be spending a penny on temperature, leaving him with hundred dollars to spend on food, giving you the point as thirty comma hundred. Now, if he heats the room by ten degrees, that means he increases the temperature by ten degrees. It would cost him. In the question, it was given that if he heats the room by ten one degree, it would cost him two dollars. So, if he heats the temperature by ten degrees, it would cost him twenty dollars, leaving him with hundred minus twenty, which is eighty dollars. So, if he heats the temperature by ten degrees, starting from the um. Uh, Thirty degree temperature. In order to reach a forty degree temperature, he has to spend twenty degree twenty dollars, leaving him with eighty dollars to spend on food, giving you the point as forty comma eighty. 
if he cools the room, that means he reduces the temperature by 10 degrees. Cooling the room by 1 degree, the cost was $3. So if he cools the room by 10 degree, the cost becomes $30. Leaving him with 100 minus 30, which is $70 to spend on food. Now he is spending $70 on food. But for that, he is increasing, he is reducing the temperature of the room by 10 degrees. Starting from the point of 30 degrees, if he reduces the temperature by 10 degrees, he would be reaching a point of 20 degrees. Giving you the point as 20, 70. If I plot these three points, which are 30, 100, 40, 80 and 20, 70, they would lie here. And joining these points, I would be easily able to get my budget constraint for the month of December. Now let's repeat the same exercise for the month of August. In month of August, the temperature outside is 85 degrees. So your starting point now becomes 85,100, which would lie here. Now if you see that if you do not want to do the math again, you all you have to do is just start from 85 comma and draw the parallel line to these inverted V lines. So your budget line would look like this. But if you're not sure whether this would be the case, you can again do the maths. How? So again, we would be reducing the temperature by 10 degrees and it would be increasing the temperature by 10 degrees. In order to reduce the temperature by 10 degrees, you are reaching a point of 75 degrees, giving you a cost of $30. And uh, now you're reaching a point of 75 degrees. The amount left for food would be 100 minus 30, which is 70. So your point becomes 75 comma 70. And increasing the temperature by 10 degrees, giving you the temperature of 95 degrees. Cost here is $20. So your point now becomes 95 comma 80, which are these two points. So this is the red in budget line for the month of August.